about how to solve the problem of a smoky room after you've lit your log burning stove. I can tell you I've had it happen to me at least four times and it's not a pleasant thing to have happen and you know if I hadn't have solved it I think the uh, log burner could have been well on its way to the scrap heap so I really did have to get my head down and get it sorted and now I'm going to share that information with you because I know there are a lot of people out there all around the world who have this issue from time to time and it is very very solvable you just need to understand what's going on and I'm going to tell you okay let's look at some different styles of houses and the different types of chimneys or flues that you can have with each of these basically this is a fairly standard house in the UK this could equally be a semi-detached or even a terraced house they all have much the same internal type of chimney then secondly we have what we call in the UK a bungalow I think a lot of countries around the world would call that a single story. Again, that's got an internal chimney. And then we have the big townhouse. They could be three stories. They could equally be more stories as well. They're all different sizes all around the world. Again, with an internal chimney. Then we'll come to an, another type of chimney. And I'm going to put it on the sort of house that I'm in at the moment. And I will tell you right now... But the problem that we're trying to solve for you here, and I'm going to explain to you, and you will solve it, is I've had this problem with this house, and what I'm drawing here is an external flue. This is a stainless steel flue, and my log burner sits roughly in, in the house just like that. Again, smoke coming out here. So obviously this type of flue is far more exposed than internals. But you still get smoky rooms in, with internal chimneys. So the same sort of principles apply, but it's more likely to happen with one like this. Although there are lots and lots of different reasons why you can get smoke. It can be your location. It can be the, the way the weather comes nearby. It can be you have a tall tree or you have a tall house next to you, or you have a hill. You know, you, you imagine you're on the side of a hill in your house here, you've got your chimney, and the hill goes up here. And the weather comes, comes along. What does it do? It goes round like this and dumps itself straight down your chimney. It's a possible cause. It won't be for everyone, but it is possible to happen. And then again, you know, you can have trees sitting up here and all sorts of things that disturb the airflow and, and can cause you problems with your chimney. This won't be the majority of you, but it will be like that for some of you. And it's still possible to solve it with the way that I'm going to tell you, but it might be a little bit harder. Okay, so what really is happening to cause your rooms to fill with smoke? So if we look at... My, my sort of flu, but it equally applies with brick-built chimneys as well, and proper um, fireplaces with you know nice elaborate fires. In. So you got this, and in my case, it, it, it's something like this. It, it would be here. It would go up the outside of the house, and it would go in through here. So that's what I'm drawing for you here. Now, on a cold day in cold weather. Inside this chimney, or flue, doesn't matter what it is, it's going to be full of cold air. And it's weighing heavy. Cold air, as we all know, falls, hot air rises. So that's full of cold air. And that is what the problem is. The chimney is blocked up with cold air. There's nothing rising to take that hair, air out. So what, you, what we've got to do... And I'll be showing you the various methods that you can go through to achieve this. Is We've got to create heat in here. It would be no good lighting a conventional fire with wood and things like that because it's going to create smoke and you're going to have the problem. So what you've got to do is you've got a bit of a battle on your hands. So we're going to put a source of heat here and that will slowly 
work its way in here in, in a vortex and it will go round and round and round and round. By this time you're having a real battle with this cold air, pushing it up your chimney or your flue so that it comes out. The cold air will come straight out there and the hot air will just fly away once you've successfully corkscrewed all the way up that flue. So that's what the problem is and the way to solve it. Now I'm going to help you try and find a way of creating that, that um, heat source without smoke because you don't want smoke. If you fail, you don't want the smoke to come back. So let's have a look at that next. So how do we detect whether we've got a cold flu or not? It's simple really. All you have to do is to put your hand in. If you can feel really cold air, and especially if you can feel it falling down the flu, then you know you're definitely gonna have trouble. So if you do feel the cold air coming down, then we've got to solve it. I can remember somebody um, years ago telling me the easiest thing to do is to take a couple of sheets of newspaper, just like this, place it in the chamber and light it. Let it cause a nice lot of heat. You might have to do this two or three times before you're totally satisfied but you will be able to feel that your flu, if you've got uh, this type of flu, would have warmed up quite a bit. If you think that's not going to do the job because you've got a very high chimney, how about a few bits of cardboard? It's not going to cause any smoke or any issues at this, this point of time. So just make it last a bit longer. And believe you me, there is quite a lot of heat there already. So that heat's going to work its way up there. So. You can just help it, close the door a little bit, create a little bit more, more uh, draft and, and it will go away a bit faster. There we go, so that should be sufficient for my flu and hopefully it will be for yours as well. But there is another way and I'm going to show it to you. Okay, now that is considerably hot now. So, you know, that will be working its way up that chimney. It's not a particularly cold day here in the UK today. Uh, where are we? March the 22nd, 2017. It's not too bad a day, but it's, it's rainy and it's wet. But that is very warm now. And that, I know, would work for me. And hopefully it would work for you. Well, there is another way. And if you feel that you're going to really struggle, because it's particularly cold, or, you, or you're, you're in a very cold place, district, then you're going to have to resort to a blow lamp. And these are, you know, you can buy these anywhere. They're quite cheap, really. And um, just get that there. Yeah. And then you just place that up to the top. Just concentrate it on the top of the chamber. There's, there's a metal plate in mine between the flue and the inside of the chamber. I normally try and heat that up and it'll do the job. Do that for probably three minutes, four minutes and that will equally solve the problem. And then hopefully you'll light a nice fire and that will be the end of that problem forever.